What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about a car that definitely should see a lot more love on the channel than it actually does, which is our uh, twin turboed LS1 80 series Land Cruiser. So this is definitely one of my, the most in-depth builds that we've done on the channel. However, we did it very early on when we started the YouTube, so a lot of people, probably a lot of you don't even know about it. Um, it you don't see it much on the channel because ironically it's actually one of the most reliable vehicles we have. So. It doesn't really ever break, nothing really usually ever goes wrong. We just use it to tow cars around, Rex daily drives it a little bit, and uh, it's been rock solid. Uh, so it definitely should probably see a lot more love than it gets. Um, it should be exposed a lot more. But uh, given that when we started the channel, it was largely based on Japanese stuff and drifting and that, uh, we did find when we built this, uh, it just didn't do very well as far as views go on the channel. Uh, it seemed the demographic of people that were watching the channel at that point weren't super interested. Uh, at this stage, we've sort of done quite a lot more LS stuff on the channel, so with any luck, a lot of you are probably a little bit more interested in this car that we've built. Uh, so this is our 80 series Land Cruiser. Our father bought this in uh, 1997, so it's been in the family for a very long time. Uh, it's owned and built by Rex, aka the other guy. <laughs> so through a fair few different sort of deals and stuff that happened between uh, Rex and Dad and that uh, Rex ended up with it. It was originally a 3F petrol manual. Uh, Rex then converted it to a small block Chevy, which we then actually added injection to uh, via Holly Sniper EFI system. Uh, we had many issues with the Holly Sniper setup, and uh, eventually Rex just decided he was gonna LS it, and then he decided if he was gonna LS it, he'd have to build pipes anyway, so then he was gonna turbo it, and then he was gonna twin turbo it, and uh, you know, one thing leads to another, and here we are with our twin turbo LS 180 series cruiser. So externally, it's certainly nothing special. Just a pretty standard DX, so a base model vinyl sort of barn door series, 80 series. Uh, it was one of the very, very early ones. So uh, part-time four-wheel drive. So it's 92, this one, I think. It's got a two-inch lift, 33-inch tires. We've got the roof awning and a few other things. Just pretty generic uh, four-wheel drive stuff, really. There's nothing too special outside. It's very patinaed. Uh, Rex was very particular about leaving it this way. It's very sleeper-ish. Um, but you know, it's what's inside that counts. So in the bay here, we've just got a alloy 5.7 Gen 3 LS1 that came out of a Statesman. We tore this engine down and just refreshed it, uh, fresh rings and bearings. Um, just uh, regular upgrades for an LS. We've got upgraded lifters, springs, uh, we've got solid uh, rocket trunnions. We've got a nice little little talky cam, little tow cam as you would say. It's not a very aggressive cam. It's a pretty basic setup, just some ARP head bolts, you know, nothing too spectacular. Uh, for turbos, we currently have twin Kinagawa GDX 2867s. We originally built this with twin China GT 3582s with very small housings. Uh, however, we did find that um, it wasn't the best setup for you know, a four wheel drive, something you needed to be talky and, and happy. So we're not going to the Kinagawa GDX 2867s. Um, being ball bearing and being Kinagawa, they are a fair bit more efficient than just a China turbo or your regular, you know, eBay China turbo, as you would say. Uh, and we have found that uh, these turbos have completely changed the car. Uh, it's, it's an incredible car, incredibly talky. Um, it's, it's everything you could want from a four wheel drive. Apart from that, the engine's still controlled by the stock Gen 3 PCM, just with a HP tuner's tune on it. Um, whole car was built in-house. Rex did pretty much all of the fabrication. At the time that Rex built this, I was still working, so I wasn't here for a lot of the uh, initial build for this car. But as you can see, the engine bay got painted while the motor was out and under the bonnet so that it presented nicely uh, under the bonnet. It's sort of weathered and, and got away from us a little bit now. Uh, originally, the heat wrap was all black and the, all the pipework was ceramic coated underneath it. Uh, the heat, heat wrap has gone white, the engine's getting a bit faded, it's all getting a bit affected by the heat. Um, but regardless, uh, this thing's awesome. It makes a touch over 500 horsepower at the wheels on the 33s uh, at 14 psi, uh, which is our sort of high boost. And on our low boost, which is 12 psi, um, that's sort of what it gets driven around with. Now, as you can see here, when we built this, we knew that heat was going to be an issue. So, Rex built this auxiliary water tank. Uh, this is literally just a water tank which feeds the, the water pump. Um, so, radiator uh, pretty much drops into this tank and then this tank feeds the water pump. And this gives it uh, much more cooling capacity for the cooling system. This is an extra 12 litres, I think we worked out. Uh, so, water temp for this thing is, you know, very reasonable. Um, it uh, is up, even just towing with really high ambient temps, it seems to keep pretty consistent water temp. 
uh, even, you know, forward driving up the beach, soft sand, it never really gets away from us, the water temp. Our biggest issue with this car is still ambient under bonnet temperatures. Uh, we do find that it's causing a lot of issues with melting things and a few other things, uh, which we are planning on trying to fix soon. So obviously by nature, turbo systems generate quite a lot of heat and we have always been plagued with heat from under bonnet uh, with, with this vehicle. Uh, we've, if you notice, you, you'll see all these heat shields that have been made for all of the uh, custom fuse boxes and relay boxes that Rex input when he put all, did all the wiring for the car. This is because we found that up the beach in the soft sand really you know loading it up uh, and getting that a lot of that heat off the uh, manifolds was actually melting a lot of these boxes a lot of the stuff was getting very badly affected by heat so we've slowly been working towards doing everything we can to sort that out so the next thing for this vehicle is going to be a complete redesign we're going to completely remake the manifolds position the turbos further back we're going to fit gen 4 accessories over the gen 3 as the offset is different they're not offset as far from the block it moves everything on the front of the motor back essentially which will give us just a little bit more room for that uh, behind that radiator for flow um, so we're hoping to, to try and get on top of all these heat issues once and for all uh, however as long as you're uh, not loading it up for really long periods at a time uh, it, it is fine it operates great so stepping inside the car here you can see we've got an auto so this is a 4L80E auto from the states these uh, autos came in a lot of the bigger trucks in the states that were less powered uh, they're super strong and being four speed obviously a massive advantage for uh, you know general general driving use so we had to pull this one down and actually put a reluctor wheel in the back of the box for a speed sensor because most of the four-wheel drive cars that came out in the states had a speed sensor in their transfer case so a lot of these auto boxes don't actually have a reluctor wheel in the back of them for a speed signal so we did have to pull the box down and install that uh, but after that uh, it's fine for the the ls1 pcm to control we've got our eboost street 40 here uh, we've also got just a cheap Defi all-in-one gauge off eBay. This is just to monitor the vitals of the engine. Uh, it's nice and neat. You don't need a million gauges. Everything's in one gauge. It's programmable, has programmable alarms, which is really, really handy. So apart from that, everything's quite stock. We're running a stock Land Cruiser 80 series transfer case, which is adapted via uh, Mark's four-wheel drives. Uh, and the converter for the 480 we had sent to the converter shop and they just stripped it and uh, and just wound up as much stall as we could possibly get out of a stock size converter. You'll also notice in here we've got AC. The AC is hooked up, converted, everything works. We also converted the uh, Commodore Cruise Control even. So this car is uh, turbo LS, auto, AC works, it's ice cold, it also has cruise control. It's a very, very nice, comfortable car to drive around. As you can see, being the DX, it's all vinyl, vinyl floors, vinyl seats, super easy to clean and maintain. Uh, you can go smashing up the beach. It's a bucket of fun, this thing. It is outrageously fun. So you can see from the manifolds, from the turbos, we have twin 38 mil gates, which are plumbed back in and that it is three inch dumps. And uh, it's actually a twin three inch exhaust all the way back to the rear of the car. So as you can see, we've got two 100 cell high flow cats as well. So it's got catalytic converters. We've tried to make everything as neat and as legal as we possibly can. Uh, this exhaust actually crosses over the top of the chassis there, across to the other side, which meets where the stock exhaust route would be. Getting both twin three inch pipes over the diff was a very, very big ask. We actually had to do a little bit of notching and clearancing, a bit of attitude adjustment, but we did manage to get it there. As you can see, the tailpipes are fairly symmetrical, as symmetrical as we could get them, because we've got a little bit of OCD. And getting both three inch pipes through there was a mission, but we did manage. So as you can see, a keen eye will spot the dump pipes through the wheel wells. This is one of the biggest giveaways of the car from the outside if you're looking close enough. These are on both sides. You can see that one on this side as well. We've also got some nice big oil coolers on both sides of the bar, which we've actually removed the uh, stock indicators in the body to create a mesh panel so that these actually get some airflow. We've installed LED indicators on the bull bar instead, which work great. And uh, one of these is for engine oil and the other one is for transmission oil, just to keep temperatures under control. And these things work a treat. So up the rear end of the car here, we've actually got a completely stock 80 series diff. Uh, I was corrected before, this is actually a 91 model, not a 92. So this is a 91 model uh, Toyota 80 series Land Cruiser diff. Uh, it has nearly half a million Ks on it. And uh, apart from just an auto locker for the center, this thing has not skipped a beat. So we know a lot of people uh, reckon that the 80 series diffs are made of glass. Uh, obviously, if you have some mechanical sympathy and you drive nicely enough, they will survive. 
Uh, we haven't even upgraded the uh, the studs for the axle in this. I know a lot of people drilled them out to 100 series uh, studs, uh, but we've actually left them stock. We decided if they ain't broke, don't fix them. So we we, we have the uh, the studs here ready to put in for if ever they go wrong. But we've just never had a problem. We've had this thing hard launch on tarmac at eighth mile drags. We've roll raced in it, smashing up the beach in soft sand. Uh, you know, full tilt. Uh, this thing has never, never given us any problems as far as the different axles go. So, touch wood, don't have any wood to touch, but <laughs> touch wood, uh, it stays that way uh, and it stays reliable um, because, uh, yeah, we're not exactly kind to it, but we don't uh, purposely abuse it either. So the front diff is completely stock 80 series, we've not even touched it uh, besides changing the oil. It's just an 80 series front diff. It's never given us any problem. We do hard launch this in four wheel drive uh, when we're at eighth mile drags and stuff. So um, we are surprised, honestly, that we've never had a problem with this drive line, but uh, we're certainly not complaining. So as far as the fuel tank goes, obviously being a 3F, this was originally a carby car. So we had to ditch the 3F fuel tank. We actually had to put a fuel tank out of a fuel injected 1FZ80 series in so that we had a, uh, a fuel pump. So here we have the actual dyno graph for the car uh, from our Dyno Dynamics dyno. So as you can see, we've got a maximum of just over, just a touch over 500 horsepower at 14 pound, uh, just over 5,000 RPM. But not only that, you can see back here, all the way back at 2,500 RPM, we're looking at sort of 365 at the wheels by 2,500 RPM. So this is a very, very large area under a power curve. The thing is a monster. It uh, absolutely tractors. It's so much fun. It's ridiculous. Uh, this is the torque curve, which is calculated by the dyno. Dyno calculates... Uh, just over pretty close to 930 foot pounds at the flywheel. Again, this is a calculated, don't take it with, uh, don't take it as gospel. It's just calculated by the dyno. But regardless, the thing is an absolute tractor. Um, it is so good for towing. It is so good for driving on the beach. It's just a bucket of fun. So there you have it guys. That's the build breakdown on the big V80. It is uh, our pride and joy. <laughs> At the, of the fleet, uh, it is just always dead reliable. We've worked it to the bone and it's never skipped a beat. It's been absolutely amazing. So uh, hopefully you'll see a lot more of it on the channel soon. Uh, for those of you who have been around for a while, you know of the car. We have posted videos of it up the beach. We posted videos of it at Lakeside doing eighth mile drags. Uh, we've posted videos of it at, uh, at roll racing. Um, it's pretty interesting the way it's, the way it's set up. You know, we, we spanked a, a, a brand new VF GDS LSA. Um, at roll racing. So as much as it's uh, you know convenient, it actually is quite a quick car. As far as our mileage goes, or our economy, uh, it's very bad. <laughs> um, realistic though, it's not a lot worse than a lot of people out there in really highly strung diesels or like turboed inline six petrols. So we get around uh, 20 litres per hundred in this thing, 20 to 22 litres per hundred. So I certainly know of cars that are just as bad, yet half the power. So it, realistically, it's not, it's not that bad. So. We massively enjoy this car. We hope the internet starts to enjoy it a bit more. <laughs> um, but that's the 80 series. It's, uh, it's comfy, it's nice and cool. It's got cruise control, it's auto, makes good power. And uh, yeah, it's bulletproof. So thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more of it and more cars like this. Uh, head to our online store and buy yourself something nice. And we'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace out, see you, bye.